Hello and welcome to episode two. In this episode, we're going to explore the concept of the digital post office. At the end of this episode, we will have learned what do we mean by the digital post office pattern and we'll have looked at how it works in practice and finally we'll have gone over the prerequisites for this pattern to work. All right, let's get started. So this digital post office pattern. Firstly, why is digital post a good analogy for this first pattern? Well, conceptually, the model is actually similar to a traditional paper-based flow of a post office. Let's look at an example. Imagine Marta. She's just given birth to a baby called Ava, and she wants to register the birth of her newborn child. Now, for this procedure, Marta needs to prove her own nationality. So Marta will make a request to the government entity that manages that authentic source of information. In some cases, that will be a population register. She wants them to issue an official document that demonstrates her nationality, which in this case is often a birth certificate. She can use this official document in the process of registering Ava's birth, and the administration responsible for births can issue Ava's birth certificate with the same nationality as her mother's. So how would this work in a digital world? Well, it means that the requester, Marta, and the authentic source, the population register, need a way to connect. They connect via a digital post office so that they can exchange messages. So what do they actually need to make this connection happen? Well, both parties have to have a way to identify themselves digitally, and the authentic source has to have a way of verifying who is sending them the request. In our case, that's Marta. The authentic source needs a way to receive requests in a digital format via a secure channel. And finally, they also, the authentic source, need a way to issue the digital document or data in real time back to the requester Marta through the same secure channel. So how does this actually work? Well, now we know what they need to do to set up the process. How do we keep it secure? Well, we use data exchange protocols. All of them follow the logic of the digital post office combined with this idea of trusted digital entities. So assuming that the exchange is carried out over the internet, a secure information exchange protocol is adopted by the entities wanting to share data with each other so that they can ensure the integrity and confidentiality of the information they are sharing. This protocol defines key attributes at envelope level, such as who's the sender, who's the receiver, and what type of information is being exchanged. Before sharing the data, both the data requester and the data provider need to acquire electronic certificates that uniquely identify who they are. It means that data is signed and timestamped before being shared to ensure that confidentiality. When the setup process for creating a trusted communication channel is complete, the entities have all the infrastructural elements in place to trust each other's identities and the integrity of information that they receive from each other. For additional security, the exchange documents or data can also be digitally signed to ensure that their origin and integrity is verifiable beyond the exchange. So what are the prerequisites for this pattern to work? Now, more often than not, these exchanges of information are happening between government entities, playing the role of sender and receiver. The request for information is initiated by the government entity on behalf of a citizen or business after they've identified themselves to a service and provided their consent for the exchange of data to take place. So this is why we need a digital identification framework, which is in fact a crucial prerequisite for this pattern to work. Secure mailboxes and other e-government solutions, such as e-government portals, are often coupled with this type of digital post solution. Okay, so what did we cover in this episode? Firstly, that the digital post office is similar to a traditional paper-based flow of a post office. Secondly, the digital post office must be combined with the concept of trusted digital entities. 
And finally, we've learned that a digital identification framework is a crucial prerequisite for this pattern to work. This is a solid foundation for moving on to the next episode, where we're going to explore the digital wallet pattern. When you're ready, I'll see you on the next video.